that's what happens in your life when you invest in the wrong things and you keep investing in the wrong things and then suddenly the flood just shows up. And all the things you've been investing in is washed up. So Abraham is saying, before we begin this investment matter, let us look for a city that has what? Foundation. Let us look for a city whose builder and maker is God. So I'm showing you that city right now. He says, anyone that hears these sayings of mine and do it. Okay. So the first foundation is what we call the foundation of the word of God. The foundation of the word of God. You want to get married. Do you have any scripture that is your guarantee any scripture that is your insurance policy. Most of the time, the reason why we fear is because we do not have any policy. We do not have any guarantee. Right? So what is the scripture that you have found that guarantees that your marriage will not fail? You don't have any. What is the scripture that guarantees that you are protected? You don't have any. Maybe you are telling me, I say, Pastor, well, I don't live in danger. Live in peace. There's tranquility. Don't wait for the day the storm comes, the test comes to unveil the situation. There is an open invitation to the heel of the Lord and that's why I'm making this emphasis. What is the scripture that you have concerning your health? Or you don't believe that Satan wants to put sickness upon you? One of the easiest ways Satan achieves mind bending is to put an affliction on your body. The moment there's an affliction on your body, you are praying about it, it's not going, you begin, it will influence your thinking, it will capture your thoughts. You know, I told you that if we talk about the roof, we are talking about protection. covering right and that's what the rains will come to check the wind will check your structure if you have pillars fastened into your building and the flood will come to check the foundation is it deep enough to survive a slide I had a very, very beloved friend that I loved so much. And the only thing I knew was pray. So I, I would invite him. I said, let us be praying together. So you know how we do it? There's a class. A class somewhere. The class is locked. Okay? So we will we'll go through the burglary to enter into the class so that we can pray and because if you want to come out you to take an effort so that's how me and my friend entered to pray do you realize that I was faced to the wall praying he slipped through the burglary and escaped <laughs> that was how desperate he was to escape prayer So I met him in the city of Abuja. Because that, the escape he made was also an indication of the kind of foundation he has chosen. Many years later, the floods came. 
And those days, anytime you see him, he has a photocopy document of one, one land in Abuja. He's hawking, he's selling. Every day, he's looking for buyers. Every day, he has landed property, he has documents. See, this one is in Kuje. This one is in Yanya. Then, during the weekend, he will take off. He said, okay, he's going to meet a buyer. He kept, I don't know if he actually sold any, but I'm not sure he sold any. But he was preoccupied with documents. He, and it looked like foolishness for me to detain myself in the place of prayer. It was 10 years later that the foundations began to speak. I met him in Abuja. When I was still working, he now told me that, am I aware that he wrote the aptitude test for the job that they gave me? Uh -uh. You wrote the aptitude test because me, I didn't write. Me, I was in, in Kano preaching as a missionary. If you ask me who is the minister of finance, I don't know. Because he, I don't care. I was on the mission field, right? So, I was told that I should come because I have an interview. So, I came down to Abuja. He wrote the aptitude test. His name did not come out. I wrote the, I didn't write the aptitude test. My name was on the list. And I'm telling you this by God. So, I was not sure whether it was me because I know I didn't write. So, the woman that we verify to check if you actually passed the aptitude test. I gave her an ID card that had my name. She checked it, number 144. She said, you can move there. Got my friend that was always carrying papers. He wrote that exam. I did not write the exam. My name came up. You know, I've told you that the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong. It was in the place of prayer that the Holy Spirit began to give me scriptures for my destiny. Scriptures for my health. Scriptures for my protection. In the place of prayer. He began to put it upon my heart. He said, when God invites you to that hill where he is, that hill where he wants you to establish your destiny, one of the first things he does to you is that he brings you into what we call a word foundation. Word foundation. He says, the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. So when you find someone that was tempted and the person fell into temptation, the person did not fall into temptation because of temptation. The person fell into temptation because he had a faulty foundation. Because the temptation was supposed to be a test of how concrete, how rooted he was. And it was a test that revealed the fact that he did not have sufficient foundation that could see him through temptation. It is not a temptation that is the issue the temptation is trying to probe his foundation. Many years later, we were all exposed to storms, serious storms. And by the time I came back to Benue State to work here, when I found a few of our classmates and they set up a WhatsApp group 
I don't know how many people are on that group right now. Just to reunite the class. So I got to engage with people that I have not seen for the past 10 years, for the past 12 years on that platform. While we were still on campus, they used to call me a radical, a zealot, that I was just wasting my time doing this church stuff. All right? We did not have girlfriends. Hallelujah. And, you know, the reason why we, we, we did not have was not because we didn't have the capacity to convince people. I just wanted you to know that. We were high in capacity. But the foundation, yeah, I, oh, I assure you. Oh, Jesus. We were high in capacity. If it's to conv uh, don't even worry about it, don't worry about it. We were not doing girlfriends. And, and for many of them, it was boring to do the kind of life we were doing. But we were filled with the Holy Spirit. He gave us a few clues about where he was taking us to. And it was bigger than what we could even imagine. So, well, we knew he spoke, but no, it's out of the box. It's too big and all of that. And that was why he did not allow us compromise. He did not compromise the standard. Because he was trying to build a life that could hold the weight of that destiny that he showed us. For instance, I will have invitations to preach in some nations and God will say, he's not the one that opened the door. Okay, why are you not sovereign? Why did you allow the door to open? If you don't want me to enter. So I used to ask God all those questions and he won't answer. Yeah. So I know you have questions in your work with God. Why is this? You know, I had more questions than you. But I was learning how to walk in line with the word of God in scriptures and the voice of God that came through the Holy Spirit. And to the best of my knowledge, I was telling one of our elders that everything that God has asked me to do till today, I did it. Yes. Till this moment. That's what I, why I'm not afraid of death. If death comes, any time it comes, that God allows. Ooh. Everything he told me to do till now, I did it. Anyone I didn't do, I didn't know. That was how my life was built. I heard his voice. I walked with him. There were opportunities that came when I had nothing. And he said, I didn't open that door. And I refused to end. Even my relatives castigated me all kinds of things, this and that, this, this. He said he didn't open the door. I refused to end. So as I, after a, a while, my relatives said I was by myself, I was beside myself, I was just deluded because I will not enter a door that Jehovah has not opened. When the time came for me to, because he spoke about this door, the door I entered, which was my 16-year job, he spoke about it. He spoke about it one year before the establishment was even established. That he would give me a job then. It was one year, exactly one year before the establishment was put together. And he gave me the opportunity to serve there. By the time I entered there, and I began to. Then my mom, after five years, looking at my life, because my, my life was a puzzle to my mom. After five years, looking at my life, called my younger sisters and told them that this man knows the way. Follow him. 